Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. In a farewell speech after serving 10 years as China's number two leader, the Premier Li Keqiang had a cryptic message for his staff. While people is acting, heaven is watching. Heaven has eyes. His unusually candid words seen in a video clip on social media but unreported by official media stoked speculation about whether he was making a veiled attack on President Xi Jinping. Li's words betray a deep sense of frustration over a decade in which he could have exerted his largely reformist agenda but was hamstrung by being in the shadow of a political strongman and other crises, according to Dr. Wang Jintao, a friend of Li at the prestigious Peking University 40 years ago. Dr. Wang was a political dissident jailed in the 1989 Tiananmen Democracy Movement and now living in exile in the US. Li has studied Western legal traditions and has a degree in law and a doctorate in economics. When he became premier in 2013, there were high hopes that he would be a liberal reformer, but he was unable to make headway. Li might have led China's economy through a tough time marred by rising uh, government debt, trade frictions with the US, and the COVID pandemic. But his power was curbed by Xi, who placed his allies in key strategic positions over him. This year's government work report is surprisingly short, and Li Keqiang finished reading it in less than one hour. Although in recent years, the People's Congress have advocated shortening the time of the work report, not like before, which could last for two to three hours. And the meeting sessions have also been compressed. But this year is the year of leadership transition, and it's not a regular five-year term, but a 10-year term transition. So it's reasonable to talk about the experience of the past 10 years and give some suggestions to the new government. Therefore, it's appropriate to have a slightly longer report. However, although Li summarized the work of the past five years in the report, the entire report was not lengthened. Did he have nothing to say? Not really. It was inconvenient, or he did not want to say it. The shortened government work report was not a big deal. The report itself was unremarkable. However, the missing catchphrases such as mass entrepreneurship and innovation was significant. This catchphrase used to appear in every report of Li Keqiang's. Just like dynamic zero COVID is Xi Jinping's signature phrase, mass entrepreneurship and innovation is also Li's signature phrase, a policy he has been pushing hard for as premier in the past. Fortunately, Li's other signature phrase, Internet Plus, was still included in the report. So, does the absence of this signature phrase mean that his advocacy of the mass entrepreneurship and innovation has failed? At this year's People's Congress, both Premier Li Keqiang and Wang Yang delivered their reports with a serious demeanor and did not smile or demonstrate any humor. Wang Yang is the chairman of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. Wang, in particular, appeared to have aged significantly. This is likely due to the fact that this is their final appearance as national leaders in official media. They may appear in the future as accompanying figures at major events, but from this moment on, they have officially bid farewell to their political careers. Ten years ago, when Li took the stage at the People's Congress as the premier, he was full of energy and spirit. Despite being the original candidate for the general secretary position, he was passed over by senior leaders like Jiang Zemin, who wanted to pass on the Communist Party's red legacy to the second generation of leaders. Nonetheless, in the first three years, the Chinese public and the media still regarded Xi and Li as equals, calling their leadership duo the Xi-Li system, indicating that both inside and outside the party. 
Li was highly regarded at the third plenum of the 18th Central Committee. The CCP established an ambitious plan for comprehensive reforms, which was likely formulated under the influence of Li and other reform-minded leaders within the party. Unfortunately, the good times did not last long, as Li was no match for Xi in terms of political maneuvering and tactics. Although Li had spent a considerable amount of time in official dome before becoming the second in command of the Communist Party, serving as the secretary of the Communist Youth League and the head of several major provinces, he was only at an elementary level in terms of political maneuvering compared to Xi, who could be considered a master of power struggles. When Xi came to power, he was seen as someone who could be easily molded by the old guard without his own power base or ability to make decisions. But within three years, he quickly expanded his power and position, forcing the upper echelons to accept him as the core leader. Hu Jintao served as general secretary for 10 years but never received the title of core leader. And although Jiang Zemin was the core leader, it was bestowed upon him by Deng Xiaoping. While Xi self-proclaimed the title of core leader, which is truly amazing. As Xi rose as the core leader, Li was marginalized and the term Xi Li system was no longer used. In the following seven years, Li was constantly suppressed by Xi. Last year, due to public dissatisfaction with Xi caused by the epidemic, Xi's opponents once fantasized about Li replacing Xi, but instead of waiting until retirement age. Xi took Li out and even kicked the entire faction out of the Politburo. Li lacks the ruthfulness, uh, ruthlessness and the decisiveness. He tends to be soft and bookish. In the big melting pot of the Chinese Communist Party's upper echelons, he is destined to never become the highest leader. He may not even become a good prime minister. In Chinese history, to achieve great accomplishments as a prime minister, one must first handle the relationship with the emperor well and gain the emperor's trust. Second, one must have the ability to command all officials and make them obey the orders. Third, one must have strong administrative abilities. With these three qualities, one can basically become a good prime minister, assisting the emperor in governing the country or cleaning up masses for the emperor. With the hindsight, the only prime minister who approached these three standards was Zhou Enlai. Zhou had the opportunity to become the highest leader of the Communist Party of China several times. But when he encountered Mao, he could only become Mao's prime minister. In terms of personality, Zhou and Li are of the same type. Mao actually did not trust Zhou very much, and he had repeatedly criticized Zhou in history, forcing Zhou to make self-criticisms. However, Mao could not manage the country without the Zhou because Zhou had rare abilities to handle complex situations and was meticulous and hands-on in his work. At the same time, he was also excellent in power struggles and was a senior official whom other high-ranking officials respected. Zhou used his loyalty to help Mao manage the problems of China. Li may want to assist Xi well like Zhou did, but unfortunately he does not have Zhou's administrative ability, tactics, and seniority. Under the system of the CCP, if one only has liberal ideas but lacks the ability to implement them and wants to stick to their own set of ideas, they will inevitably come into conflict with the conservative top leaders. Both Li and his predecessor Wen Jiabao advocated a market reform, with Wen going further and calling for democratization in China. But they were both gentle and lacked authority. Perhaps this is the inevitable fate of CCP leaders who come from humble backgrounds. One had a better 10 years as a premier than Li because he had to assist Hu, who was also a weak leader and come from a humble background. The first two have landed safely. Relatively speaking, and Li's ability to retire peacefully is already lucky. 
Perhaps he is indeed relatively clean, or perhaps he was once uh, held in high hopes by opponents. But he never had any improper thoughts about the Xi or coveted that position. And finally, Xi let him go. The farewell of Li Keqiang signifies the complete end of the era of Chinese reform. He may be aware of his own weakness and feel unable to change the status quo, or he may have tried hard in the past but to no avail. As he leaves his position and looks back on the past 10 years, he must feel a sense of physical and mental exhaustion, which is why he blurted out as people act heaven watches in his farewell speech at the state council. But after unloading the burden he couldn't carry, isn't it a relief to be away from the center of power and no longer entangled in spiritual and physical struggles? For that, he's luckier than Xi Jinping. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.